day that you've given us, Lord. Um, just be with us now as we move into this time. Just uh, be with those who are not here, those that need you today, um, here within our church um, and across the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, um, we're just going to turn it over to Brother Johnny here, I think, to begin with, and then we'll pick it up from there. Okay, there. Okay. So, w w one of the things that, that happens in almost every church that we've done this uh, process through is somebody gets um, baptized. Um, matter of fact, River Springs Church, church that I just um, finished doing, uh, leading through this process at the end of the last year, they, um, they um, the worship leader, <laughs> the, the worship leader shared with me how that she had come to faith in Christ uh, while she was in college. She joined the church when she was a child, but she came to faith in Christ while she was in college. And so she said, you know, I, I've never followed Jesus in believer's baptism. And so she, um, so, so River Springs is a new church. Actually, it's about 22 years old. It started in my house um, 22 years ago. And they're located at the peak exit over in Ballantyne. And, uh, and they've got 15 acres of property, multi-purpose building, beautiful facility, great potential, uh, but they do not have an indoor baptistry, and and they actually they had never had an indoor baptism, never. Uh, and so when uh, so when this young lady uh, when she said, you know, um, I joined the church when I was a child, I became a follower of Jesus in college, but I've never followed Jesus and believed in baptism. I want to be baptized. I said, okay. <clears throat> so, um, I said, so I'm going to borrow a water trough from one of my friends. Um, you know, I, I grew up on the plantation, so, you know, I don't know how many of you, you know, know what a water trough is, but a cattle water, water trough is, you know, about, you know, maybe three feet deep and seven feet long, you know, and you fill it with water and try to warm it up before Sunday morning so the water's warm. So, so I said, well, I'm going to borrow one of my friend's water trough, and we're going to have baptis baptism service right here. Uh, in this uh, in this building, uh, on this date, and so uh, so we did. We matter of fact, they baptized two people. That uh, baptized her and baptized another lady that was seven months pregnant. So the worship leader, she uh, she she led us in worship. Uh, she led the last song uh, of the of the service, and then as she led the last song, she steps off the platform into the baptistry, and I baptized her that day. Isn't that amazing? Stedman Baptist Church baptized seven people in one Sunday at Stedman Baptist Church. One of those people that were baptized was Mary Lou Jackson. Some of you may remember Mary, Mary Lou Jackson. She, joined, she, she retired from my office 25 years uh, after having served on the associational staff for 25 years. She called me one day. And she said, Brother John, she said, you know, she said, uh, I, know I'm, I know when I die I'll go to heaven. But she says, you know, I can't say that I have ever followed Jesus in believer's baptism. Uh, I joined the church when I was a child, but I wasn't a believer then. And so she said, I want to follow Jesus and Jesus in believers' baptism. I baptized seven people, six adults and one teenager, and one Sunday at Stedman Baptist Church. My friend Ken Harmon, who is at Hewland Baptist Church down in the country, uh, just uh, a couple weeks ago baptized two, two teenagers one Sunday. I mean, so, so this is a spiritual journey. It's a spiritual process. However, there are some things that I can put on paper and say, okay, this is what it looks like, okay? And I'll call this a phonograph. Uh, I, so I sort of, I, I'm a pic picture kind of guy, so, so I needed something to be able to sort of help me to sort of know how this flows. So you have a copy of this, uh, what I call the phonograph, not flannel graph, okay? Not flannel graph, phonograph. Uh, and, and it shows the, the, the process. So it starts wide. So at the very beginning is your decision on saying, hey, we say yes to begin the process. We, we want to start this spiritual journey. And so that's where we start. We say, yes, we want to start this spiritual journey. And then, we're, and then what we do in each of these phases um, is uh, they have dates by them. 
So we sort of already know what dates we're going to follow each of these phases. But you'll notice on this phonograph, which has your name on it, okay, on June the 5th it says we're going to vote. Remember that story? What are we going to vote on? I, I don't know. I have no idea what we're going to vote on. Because you've got to go through the process. You've got to sort of seek the Lord's um, uh, heart on what it is that he wants for Westside Baptist Church. But whatever that is, um, you will see it in the form of a recommendation two weeks before you vote on June the 5th. But on June the 5th, we'll gather together and we'll vote on something or whatever it is that you decide that it needs to be presented to the church. And so between now and then, this is what we do. First of all, uh, we sort of have an introductory meeting. That's what I'm doing today. I'm just sort of introducing to you the, the funnel graph. Uh, this funnel graph shows the whole flow of things. Uh, and then we have 40 days of prayer. Uh, there's actually um, a book. It's a booklet. It's called uh, A Devotional Guide um, to Praying, the Church Praying uh, for Revitalization. Uh, 40 days, 40 brief devotions, uh, scripture, two paragraphs or so, uh, and a prayer. And so easily done, um, you know, even for the busiest person that's trying to get out the door in the mornings. Easily done. For 40 days, the church embarks together, same day, same time, same devotion for 40 days on this uh, intentional way to pray for, um, for the church and for the heart as we go through this process. So uh, usually about two or three weeks after we start, uh, we, will, we will start this um, 40 days of prayer. And then membership meetings. And actually, I wouldn't even do this process without the membership meetings. I wouldn't do it without prayer either, but I wouldn't do it without the membership meetings either. The membership meetings is this. It's uh, on a Sunday afternoon or two or three, every many it takes. Uh, there'll be a sign-up list for you to be able to sign up for uh, a 45-minute time slot to meet with me. And the 45 minutes is made up of about five to seven people. So five to seven people from here uh, would meet with me. And I'm going to tell you right now what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you to share with me your Jesus story. And I'm going to ask you to share with me your church story. That's it. So no surprises, you know, a Jesus story and a church story. So since we're talk calling them member meetings, I'm going to assume that everybody who is here, <laughs> all of the members have a Jesus story and have a church story. And I just want to hear your church story. So that's why I limited to about five to seven people so that we can hear those stories in about 45 minutes. And so everybody, as a matter of fact, everybody's encouraged. You know, I'd get on a knee and, and plea for you if you would come. So we want everybody who will to come to those member meetings. Again, I love hearing Jesus stories. Uh, it's been really, really interesting as I've, li as I've listened to Jesus stories to hear uh, sometimes I could tell in the family that, they're, that are sitting there listening to the Jesus stories that some of them are hearing uh, someone in their family share their Jesus story, maybe for the very first time. Matter of fact, I have found that sometimes people are sharing their Jesus story uh, and they haven't shared their Jesus story in a long, long time. So it's fun to hear. I love hearing them. And then, uh, then the vital sign. Uh, so... I think, uh, you know, pastor may be preaching or teaching through the seven vital signs of the church, uh, and you will get what we call like, like a little scorecard, uh, not, not on his preaching, <laughs> not on his teaching, but a scorecard of the vital sign that he's preaching on, you know, worship, music, uh, excuse me, worship, discipleship, uh, fellowship, you know, the seven vital signs. And so he's, you know, are, are you going, are you thinking about maybe preaching those or, okay, so uh, preaching those um, uh, seven vital signs, and then you'll have a little Again, we'll call it a scorecard for you to be able to sort of score how you feel like the church is, uh, is, is scoring in, in those seven vital signs. And so we do that, okay? Now, while, while, the church, while, while the church together is going through these things, then there's a leadership team. I used to call them a futuring uh, team. Uh, the, the futuring team will actually be meeting with, uh, with me. Um, and th it, this is not a program. It is not heavy on committees. Matter of fact, over the next, you know, four, five, six months, um, there's only four meetings, four meetings, okay? And so, uh, so it's not heavy on meetings. It's not, it's not committees. It's just a, a, a way to process this. But the, the, the team will be meeting with me, and I will be asking, yeah, everybody on the team has a, has a job, has an assignment. Uh, it's easy. It's not real heavy. Uh, but everybody on the team will do, be doing something to help me get information, 
so we collect information from the rest of the members or from the community. So we'll do what we call community um, demographics. Uh, we'll also do the church history, church profile, uh, your, 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 your data related on attendance, finances. So we'll just sort of pull all of that together because you see what's going to happen when you get the recommendation, um, you're also going to get a report. So you get a report and a recommendation. And actually, the report is what justifies the recommendation. So whatever, whatever comes out of that report is what's going to say, well, because of this, then we provide this recommendation to help us to have a future that's thriving and bringing God great glory. And, uh, and so, um, so, so, so I'm working with the team sort of in the background while we're sort of going through these other things for a few months uh, as, a, as a church collectively. Uh, and then there's uh, what we call leadership Q&A. Basically what that is, it's a sheet of paper uh, that has, uh, you know, it's two, it's two pages. And basically it'll, it'll ask a question like this. It'll, it'll ask if, if a young couple with a, a second grader and a four-year-old came through the church doors on a Sunday morning, uh, do you know how you would help them find a place, um, whether it be Sunday school or worship, children, second grader, preschool, you know, do you, do you know how you, how you would help them uh, with finding a place? And so, um, and then, you know, and, and, you know, the opportunity there is for you to be able to share. Um, and then, uh, then there are other things like, well, what would you say is the church's average attendance? Now, I, we ask people not to call the church office and ask that question because obviously the church secretary knows what it is. But I want to know if you know what it is. So if some people say, well, the average church attendance is 75, and, you know, and a lot of other people say, no, it's a, you know, it's a 200, well, then obviously the communication isn't well, and we want to sort of see what we can do uh, to find it. So it's not necessarily finding the right answer. It's sort of seeing what other, other people think. All right, so once we get all this information, so after several months in the process, once we get all this information, uh, a report, uh, I write the report, and, uh, and, and also uh, I write the recommendation, and I give it to the team. Okay, so I, I write the report, Johnny Rumbo writes the report, and I write the recommendation, and I give it to the team. But now this is what I tell the team. The report is the report. You know, I mean, it's just information. The recommendation Okay, the team has a choice. They actually have three choices. They probably have more than three, but I just tell them they have three. One of those choices is this. They can say, Brother Johnny, we love your recommendation, and we're going to take your recommendation, and we're going to take it to the church, and we're going to present your recommendation to the church. Okay? Sometimes, some churches, you know, it's been, it's been that way. Or they might say, Johnny, we like your recommendation but we're going to tweak it, and then we're going to own it and send it to the church. That happens more often than not. The third option is, Brother Johnny, we love you, but we do not like your recommendation. <laughs> and so that's an option. So the team says, you know, we don't, we don't really, we don't agree with your recommendation. And so we're going to take it, and we're going to, we're going to write a recommendation that we want to present to the church. So the team has three options, and those three options um, you know, we'll, they'll decide on, and then they will work on that recommendation for a couple of weeks, and then they'll present to you a recommendation. But remember, remember what I said? On June the 5th, now we, you know, something could happen that changed that date, but we're planning on June the 5th. We want to try to get the, the we want to try to get this done before you start going on vacation this summer. So, um, so June the 5th, if all goes planned, there'll be a a, a church business meeting and you'll vote on the recommendation you will you will have seen it for two weeks uh, you will have talked about it for two weeks and then you'll vote on june the 5th if all goes well okay if that 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 would be the the plan as we would try to put it on paper between the time you see that recommendation is presented on may the um 22nd the time you would see it two weeks later is when you would vote on it during those two weeks, we have two town hall meetings and a discussion-only meeting. Now, you say, well, a town hall meeting at church? Well, let me just tell you, I've never been to a political town hall meeting. I don't know what they do at political town hall meetings. I don't even think I want to go to a political town hall meeting. So, I, you know, so, so whatever your thoughts are about town hall meetings, you know, just sort of erase them because I've only been to town hall meetings that I do, and I know how they go. 
But what, they, what we do then in, the, in our town hall meetings is basically um, we will, um, we will take, you'll have, the, you'll have the, recommend, the report and the recommendation, and I will, go, I will go through the report and just share with you the information that's in the report, and then I will explain the recommendation that your team, that your team is presented to you. Not me, your team presented to you because they either loved mine, they liked it, or they didn't like it at all. But, they, but, they, but, the, but the recommendation that's presented to you is the one that your team wants you to vote on. So we, we have two town hall meetings. They're both identical. So if you come to one, you don't have to come to the other unless you just want to. Uh, so the two town hall meetings, they're both identical. Uh, they, they last uh, an hour or less. Uh, usually it's about 45 minutes of talking about the report and the recommendation and then a few minutes for discussion. But what I always say is I am here I am here, and that's true today, okay? I am here to answer any questions you have, okay? So, so I will stay as long as you need for me to stay, and I will, I will, I will definitely want, you, I want your question answered. So, so we'll have two meetings like that, two town hall meetings. And then you'll notice on this particular schedule, on June the 1st, which is, I think it's a Wednesday, on June the 1st uh, is, uh, is what we call a discussion-only meeting. So if you didn't get your an questions answered in the town hall meetings, then we have a discussion-only meeting so that you can for sure get your questions answered uh, then. Because we don't want your questions not to be answered. And so, so, so we'll get all the questions answered, uh, if not before, at least by June the 1st, because the following Sunday on June the 5th is when you're going to vote. Now, that's a vote-only meeting. You know, we've already asked all the questions before then, and then we, we, uh, we vote on June the 5th, okay? So, so that's how this process works. Now, June the 6th uh, is the day that we start doing what it is that it, whatever it is that we approved on June the, the 5th. Now, I have a team. There are seven of us that, that serve on my, uh, what we call the, the revitalization team at the association. Um, the other six are pastors, you know. I sort of consider myself a pastor too. Uh, I'm a practitioner. And so they're all practitioners. Uh, they can do this just as well as I, I can. But I sort of, uh, I wanted to be the one to, to lead you through the process. So you're going to see me the whole way through. Um, but uh, but I, I have a, a group of pastors. And what will happen is after June the 5th, is either me or one of those pastors will buddy up with, with your pastor. And we will walk with you through this process. We're saying that for at least 12 months. So, so we're, we're, this isn't something that, you know, that we just come and do and then, hey, we're off to the other one. Because like I said, we've already done this over 15 times now in Lexington Association. And so, um, but, but we're committed to walk with the pastors through this process uh, once, uh, once their church uh, is approved. Uh, today, today is a big day. Uh, I don't even know if I can remember them all, but Irma First Baptist, is when I leave here today at 2 o'clock today, I'll be going with them through um, the, the member meetings. And then uh, Oakwood Baptist um, uh, there in Lexington, they're voting today on their recommendation. Um, Hewland Baptist is having their town hall meeting this afternoon, uh, and they're voting next Sunday. So there's a lot of things going on today. Um, but today is uh, one of those becoming sort of typical days when churches are realizing they want a future that's um that's better than their present now i don't want uh, again I, i'm gonna say this and then i'm gonna see if you have any questions but you know um you know th this process isn't just for churches that are dead i mean this process is actually for churches that realize hey we 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 want a better future we just know where we are now is not where we want to stay um, and also, this, this process uh, isn't for churches that are without pastors, because we now have pastors going, or churches going through this that have pastors in place. So, so it's just like, you know, uh, maybe going to the doctor. You don't go to the doctor just when you're sick, right? You go to the doctor sometimes just to sort of say, hey, I just want to make sure I'm doing okay. So, so th this process is for every church, I think. I would love to see every church go to this process. And so, so what we're doing now is, like I said, I have a team and different team members are leading churches through this process. So the other churches I just mentioned, um, I have um, a team that's working with them, okay? Hopefully I have clarified this some for you. You see the big picture through this funnel graph. We start big and work toward uh, a vote date that um, would, for based on what this paper says, would be June the 5th. Um, Brother Ray, do you have anything you want to add to this or... or
Hello? There I am. There you go. Uh, just to let you know, uh, when he speaks of the futuring team, uh, in our bylaws it does have a provision to, uh, for the leadership, whether it's me or the deacons, uh, to select ad hoc teams. Uh, so uh, those of you who are here, and I know there's some that I have been praying about for months, uh, I will be contacting you uh, this week uh, to pray about serving on the Futuring team. So if you see my number come up, please answer. And, um, and we will uh, work through the, through the process. Uh, I will let you know uh, that as we have talked as a leadership, and, and Johnny shared with me, um, moving into this whole process that he has uh, been going through, uh, it is important for the leadership all to be on the same page. And so uh, we as a leadership, myself and the deacons have prayed. Uh, we've talked, discussed, had questions, had answers, had questions that had no answers. Uh, but we uh, stand unified today. Um, I, I, if I had the time and everybody was willing, I would ask them to come up and stand here on the stage and say, we're unified. But you know who our deacons are. Uh, and they have agreed that this is something, after praying, uh, that we want to explore. And so we just pray that you will, as I said at the end of the service, that you'll open your hearts, your minds, uh, that you'll take the 40-day journey, and that you will pray uh, for what God wants. I will let you know uh, that for those of you who are more tech-savvy, uh, I will reinstitute the whole uh, getting the update every day. I will set that up if you want to uh, text in. And uh, I'll have a link where you can just click on your phone and it will go to the day uh, for that, the 40 days of prayer. Uh, because I actually, we used that a couple years ago when we had a group of us praying. And so I'm just going to reinstitute that and you'll be able to get the notification on your phone. Uh, you can hit it and it'll go to a, a separate site that will have the devotional and the scripture reading and you'll be able to, to do that each day. So, uh, but just really excited about what God's going to do. And again, we're just not sure what that is. So I think Johnny's going to take some questions now if anyone has any questions. And I'll run around here. Yeah. The town hall meetings uh, is I, I explain the report and explain the recommendation. So the report, like I said, it has church information, it's community information. So I'll just sort of do an overview of that. Uh, and then, um, and then, then I then I basically exegete the 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 recommendation. Uh, the report should support the recommendation. Uh, that's how we come up with the recommendation is from the report. So we basically just exegete both the report and the recommendation, so that hopefully you know we'll answer your question before you ask them. But then if we don't, then we'll uh, certainly entertain questions at the end of that. I I usually you know again, depending on the question, sometimes the questions are best answered publicly so that we can make sure because uh, some some people may have the same answer but if sometimes the questions might be um, a little bit more specific or directed um, and so sometimes I'll just say well why don't we talk about that after the meeting um, I do that and I have found that to be a very very meaningful time I found one lady one time she was she was sharing some things and uh, and I did that I deferred the question and come to find out is um, after the meeting um, she she her question was a more spiritual uh, nature than than about the process, and um, and God just used that to help her to really find forgiveness in her heart toward some other people, and so um, so yeah. Thank you, Dalton. Any 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 other questions?
tell you a thing yet. <laughs> but in, in, in sharing with the deacons, there were six names, and there was one kind of, I think, alternate that I mentioned, but there were six people that I prayed that God would kind of direct me to kind of help out. Yeah, that's awesome. On the 40 days of prayer, did you say there's a group? There is. I have it at my office. We can make this available ASAP. Yeah, and there's another book. Uh, I don't think I've gone through this. It's called Five Ways to Pray for Your City. The 40 days is more internal. Lord, what do I need to do to be able to have my heart ready to experience what it is that you want? The Five Ways to Pray for Your City, which is on that list, um, um, it is more um, how can you pray for the community, um, you know, the, the different needs that exist out there. So one of those devotional guys helps us to think internally. The other one helps us to think externally. They're both really good. You know, the most important thing we can do is pray. We say that, but that's true. Any other questions? Okay, I'll be around. So if you want to ask me just a question uh, personally, uh, feel free to just come up and tell me. Okay. Okay, if you would look over the minutes, and we'll get those um, in a minute. Rick, are you going to do the financial? And we'll do that, and then we'll take care of 